And for that one, first of all, there's a shocking new development this morning in the murder investigation of Hollywood super publicist Ronnie Chasen. A man wanted in connection with the case committed suicide at a Los Angeles hotel late last night. CBS News national correspondent Ben Tracy is in Los Angeles this morning with the latest. Ben, good morning. Good morning, Erica. You know, this is where this all happened, right here at the Harvey Apartments on Santa Monica Boulevard. Apparently last night when police showed up here around 6 o'clock, this man they wanted to talk to took out a gun, fired a single gunshot, and killed himself. Now, police say he was a person of interest in this investigation that has really sent a chill through the entertainment industry. It's a suicide that may prove to be a break in the brutal murder of Ronnie Chasen. Detectives armed with questions and a search warrant entered the lobby of the Harvey Apartments on what they thought was a follow-up call. But the man backed away and refused orders to raise his hands. They attempted to uh, talk to the suspect. When they did, the suspect uh, uh, produced a handgun and there was a self-inflicted gunshot wound at that point in time. Police have not released his name or possible connection to the Beverly Hills publicist, but they have been tracking his movements. Beverly Hills police had been set up on this location, watching who was coming and going for a period of days or, or, or perhaps longer. One neighbor told the Los Angeles Times that the man he knew only as Harold told him he was an ex-convict who twice served time in state prison. He also claimed he would be receiving $10,000, but gave different reasons for coming into the money. Many remain stunned by Chasen's violent death. She was shot five times in the chest at this Beverly Hills intersection November 16th. No shell casings were found at the scene, but her killer fired a 9 millimeter handgun loaded with at least one hollow point bullet, according to a partial coroner's report. Details that may point to a targeted hit and could involve this suicide victim. In what role did he play? Did he act alone? Did he act on behalf of others? I mean, these are the big questions that police are going to have to answer as this investigation goes forward. Now, police have been pretty tight-lipped through all of this, but clearly they know more than they've let on. The one thing they have said, though, is that this investigation and this murder mystery are far from over. Erica. Ben Tracy in Los Angeles this morning. Ben, thanks. Criminal profiler Pat Brown joins us now this morning from Washington. Pat, good morning to you. It's interesting, uh, as Ben just touched on again, the lack of information that we have. There's very little detail to go on and very little detail about this man who is now dead. From what you've seen, though, what do you make? Is there some sort of a connection here to him and Ronnie Chasen? Oh, well, I would think, Erica, that there should be at this point. They've been watching him. They had to have some information that led them, obviously, to, to this particular person. And for him just to kill himself as a police approach, he knew he was going down for something big. He knew he was going back to prison the rest of his life. As a matter of fact, he told somebody, I, I killed myself before I let that happen. So he clearly knew he was going to be arrested for something more than a petty larceny. So I would say, yes, he's connected. There was some speculation that whoever may have been behind this murder was a professional hitman. Uh, a retired investigator who retired as a lieutenant, spent 38 years with the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department, said the shots really stood out, saying where they, where they were was a good shot group. Uh, and that, to him, said this was a professional hitman. But adding yeah. up those pieces that you see, you don't necessarily <laughs> agree with that. Uh, no, Eric, I don't. I mean, one of the things reasons he said that was because of the type of ammunition, which was hollow points, 9 millimeter with hollow points. And I hate to tell him this, but I got the same thing in my house, in my gun. So I have a 9 millimeter with hollow points. And if I were that close, I mean, this person either stood next to the car and shot right into it or drove up and shot right into it. We're talking about almost point blank, blank range. I could shoot that pattern. So, no, I don't think this guy's to be a professional. What he could be is a hired thug. I mean, if it is the guy that that's killed himself. This guy is a felon. He knows his weapons, uh, and he might have been paid to do it, but I wouldn't call him a professional hitman, just a, a guy who was hired to kill somebody. Do you think, based on where it stands now, we'll ever have the full story? Well, I think so, because there, there's got to be some reason they rolled in on this guy. There were no witnesses, as far as I know. I mean, he could have been stupid enough to, like, lean on the car when he shot with his hand. I mean, you know, some people do dumb things like that. Uh, but it may be that there was a connection, some kind of connection by cell phone or some kind of message or some, that they got that sent them to that particular location, which is why they were watching it. What, what's interesting to me is the fact that she was shot in the chest. And I know a lot of this, that that's the big target, but that's usually what you worry about at a distance. Usually when you're close up, you go for the head. So either he just had the angle to shoot for the chest or somebody said, don't shoot her in the face. And that might be an emotional connection. So they might be looking for somebody close to the woman, maybe who had a lot of you know, problems, gambling debts or something. Maybe somebody in the will. But I, I think they've got that connection close to Ronnie Chasen. Pat Brown, always good to have you with us. Thanks.
Thanks, Erica.